Hi, and welcome to the Zero Wasted Days podcast. I am Suzanne Acteson. I am a former C-level executive turned seven-figure serial entrepreneur. I'm a life-first business mentor, and I love helping women entrepreneurs merge strategy, feminine energetics, and embodiment to create outside-the-box business solutions and energetic solutions to their business challenges. I believe that it's time that we shift our perspective on business and life and see that our businesses are the means to us living life first. Reinventing the way that we go about our days as entrepreneurs, this podcast is designed for dream makers and action takers, and also those who value going slow and savoring the moments in between. This is the essence of living a zero wasted days life, and I welcome you to the Zero Wasted Days podcast. And welcome back to this week's episode of Zero Wasted Days. Today, I have Sarah Lambert with me here from Canada. I love recording and having Canadian guests here. It feels like coming home. And I'm really excited to have Sarah here. We connected on Instagram and have been kind of Instagram friends for the last, maybe the last year or so. And I really love Sarah's approach to business in terms of the use of our time and having passive incomes and different revenue streams. And I think it's going to be a really valuable conversation because a lot of my clients in my world, and I know my audience are so interested in doing less. I had a really amazing interview with Kate Northrup actually last week, who's like the queen of do less. And so this is a, this has been a cornerstone for my business. And so I really keen to explore the business model conversation a little bit, because I know that Mm -hmm. clients are constantly trying to find ways of being clever and being clever with their time and doing less and being more productive and Sarah's business model and what she offers her clients fits right into that. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me, Suzanne. I'm excited about this conversation. Awesome. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I see that most women assume that in order to build a big successful business, that they need to make big compromises. And one of the biggest compromises that I see them make in their business is actually about themselves. Like they compromise themselves every step of the way. I'd really love to hear how you help women build big, whatever size businesses without having to compromise. Absolutely. I think that it is so important for us. And there's it's so important for us to build something that we love and that gives us that financial freedom, but gives us the time freedom, gives us the space to be able to do more than just work. And we're both parents. And when I became a mom, it was so evident to me that I can't be working in a corporate job that requires me to be out of the home 12 hours. It just doesn't make sense. And so I wasn't about to go create a business that then required the same thing of me. And it is hard to shift that narrative in our head or that perspective Mm -hmm. in our head because we're so conditioned to believe that we need to work hard. Mm -hmm. We need to work hard. And what I believe and I help my clients with is in creating a scalable business where we can make more without doing more. And it's not all about money, but the thing is people want to make money. And a lot of times people think that in order to make more money, they have to do more, but they don't have more time. So I see this all the time. Clients come to me and they say, all right, I'm making six figures. I want to double it this year. I'm like, all right, how much space do you have in your calendar? They're like, I have no time in my calendar. So how do you, A, think that's based on your current business model, how is that going to work? And you are going to self-sabotage that because it would mean that you are killing yourself each day to get that done unless you have something that can make you money without you having to trade your time. So if you're trading time for money, unless you're just increasing your prices over and over again, you're going to cap out. And it's so important to be intentional with the way that we're building our business. And the reason that you have to be so intentional is because if you create a course or you shift your business model from the one-to-one to to the one-to-many model, that doesn't happen overnight. And you actually have to invest some time and energy and often money 
before you're even seeing the results. Mm -hmm. But as long as you know that the things that you're doing today, the projects you're working on, the shifts that you're making in your business are getting you closer to where you actually want to be. Mm. Not where it's going to make you more money this month to have your biggest cash month or whatever random milestone people are talking about on Instagram. No. What do you actually want? What are your values? And are the actions you're taking today getting you closer to that? Yeah, I love that. And it is so true. I had a client first when she was first came to work with me, she said, look at my calendar. And she sent me a screen grab of her actual calendar. And it was almost like an award. Like she felt good about the fact that her calendar was just mm-hmm. back to back to back. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we need to look at this because, you know, you have no space in your calendar for anything, let alone with what I do and trying to put themselves first. It's, but it's how we're conditioned, right? It's how uh, we've, yes, especially through corporate. And I'm the opposite where I'm like, the more spaciousness I have in my calendar, the prouder I am. I'm like, heck yeah. yes. And I do notice myself when you are at a family function or you get together with friends, their question is always, how's work? Are you busy? Mm. And as an entrepreneur, I know that what they're asking is if I say, no, I'm not busy. That actually means I'm not successful. And it's because we've equated busy with successful. And so I've had to stop and say, no, I'm not busy. Business is doing amazing, better than ever. And I'm not too busy. I'm good. So good. I have more space in my calendar than ever. And it's actually, it, I notice the discomfort that comes in, yeah. in, okay, Sarah, you're wanting to prove, oh yeah, so busy, booked out. Mm-hmm. That's not the business I'm building. And I'll say that. Mm-hmm. I'll say, oh, my business model is actually all about helping people make a full-time income on part-time hours. Yeah, I'm busy, but I'm not busy. Yeah, that's so good. And time really is the most valuable thing that we have. And I think that's something obviously that we wholeheartedly agree on. So as we come into a season, we are recording this in June 1st, coming into June, summer. Tell me how you're going to structure your business and execute on your own strategy while having maybe your kids around more at least, or at least wanting to enjoy them and through the summer months. Yeah, to be honest, it's not a huge shift that I have to make because I have maybe six hours of client calls a week and I have more calls for my own personal development than I do with my clients because I can serve 40 people on Mm. one call. Mm. And so it doesn't feel hard to me. It doesn't feel overwhelming. A few years ago, not even a few years ago, a year ago in February, I did have to stop and take a look at my business because what I do also want to say is this doesn't happen overnight. Like I mentioned, it it takes the intentional decisions and it's not going to happen overnight. Yep. And the first few years of your business, you, even though you may be building a more passive, spacious business, it mm. takes time. Mm. And I had to do certain things and invest the time then to mm. create the space now. So I'm able to now be reaping the rewards of the investments I made for the first few years of my business. But a year ago, February, I remember my calendar was booked. I was slammed. And my son was starting school last September. And I knew that my work hours were going to go from eight hours to six hours because school's six hours. And I wanted to drop him off, pick him up. So I became very intentional then. And I started taking Fridays off. So it was almost like I only have a 20 hour work week. Yeah. Six times four. Yeah. What is that? 24, 24. Um, But that's if I'm working every minute of, right. And so 24 hour work week where I was working a 40 hour work week. And so how do I then carve out, carve off those 16 hours? And I started in February Mm. where I'm like, okay, no more one-on-one clients. This is I'm capped out. And I launched a signature mentorship program, which is now where the majority of my clients go. And so it took months. And now a year later, I am so grateful for that because my calendar is so spacious. So going into the summer, I don't have to worry. Of course, there will be, the kids will be around more. I may not have as much time to go golfing and to the spa, but my business, I'm not worried about at all. Yeah. Yeah. So you've already set it up and I know you have, what do you call your Friday, your Fridays, fuck it Fridays or something like that. Fuck off Fridays. I just fuck off and do whatever I want. (laughs) Tell me why, tell me why they're so important to you. Yeah. So as a parent and an entrepreneur, a working parent, I sh- it's not mm. even entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if you're a working parent, Yeah, you're working Monday to Friday. 
and your kids, it's family time on the weekend. My yeah. kids are two and four. So there's no independence. I'm with them all the time. And so I was finding that I didn't have any time for me other than little pockets, but yeah. I didn't have this really spacious time to actually pour into me and decide what do I want to do other than, oh, I have 45 minutes. I'm going to go for a walk or take a bath. Yeah. That's not enough to really light up my soul. And so I decided to implement fuck off Fridays where I just decide I can do whatever I want. There's absolutely no guilt. And sometimes I want to work. There's sometimes I wake up on a Friday and I'm like, I actually want to work today. And then that's okay too. But that has given me so much life. And to be honest, I have my fuck off Fridays, but if you look at my calendar, I fuck off a lot more than that. (laughs) (laughs) Yesterday was Wednesday. I went golfing at 1.30 in the afternoon, but at least I just know every Friday I can make some plans for myself. Yeah, but that is the, that's the key, right? Is being able to have that flexibility and the business model that supports the life that you want. So whether it's a Friday or or there's no school largely on a Wednesday here. So I name it a no desk Wednesday, but this podcast and this, my, my philosophy is very much about helping you learn how to embody that. And so how do you actually embody it is to actually practice it. And how do you think, and maybe you can share a little bit about how some of the work that you do, how do you think people set themselves up with a business model that's going to help them do that? Yeah, I think that it is a balance between the strategy and the inner work, which is exactly what I know you represent and are passionate about. And so I often describe my philosophy on it as it's like building a fire. You need structures and strategies, just like you need sticks and kindling Mm. to build a fire. So if you're building a fire, like building a business, the sticks and the kindling, that is the structure. You need Mm. that. Otherwise the fire will just die out. But if you have too much of that, you end up suffocating the fire. So you also have to have oxygen. And so masculine structure, strategy, the sticks, the feminine, the air, the oxygen. No, that Mm. is just as important. And it's this dance because when you're building a fire, as the fire starts to grow, you need more structure. You need more sticks. You also need more air. It's this balance. And Mm. that's what it's like building your business And so if you're only focused on one, if you're only focused on the strategy, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful. I call it white knuckling it Mm. where people just decide and they just go no matter if it feels awful, but they're just going to force it to happen. Yeah. When it might look like in the fire analogy, you're just constantly relighting the fire. Just you're not letting it go out. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you actually allowed yourself to lean back and let their stop putting so many sticks on and let there be oxygen, you can then enjoy the fire. Yeah. And then alternatively, you might have too much, not enough structure, and yeah. then you can't grow the fire because you're capa- you don't have the capacity. And so 100% it's this dance between the right strategies yeah. and continuing to do your own work to raise your vibration, to increase your capacity to receive and working through the things that will create self-sabotage. And if you don't actually in your soul currently feel worthy of the desires that you have, then you're not going to have them. And a lot of that unworthiness is very subconscious. So doing that work is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we, we totally align those on those elements. And so in your space, like how does somebody, because it is all like trial and error. And like you said, there's this beautiful dance. I love that analogy of of the fire, how does somebody start to build out more of a passive business model? Yes. The first thing that you do is you decide, okay, I'm making this decision. And that might mean that you take a dip in your income. It doesn't always mean that it could actually mean that you very quickly are raising your income. For me, it's very much been like that. I was working one-to-one when I first started my business, it was one-to-one and I was making a couple thousand a month. But then when I launched a course, it was consistent 10 K months. And that was in 2019 and everything has just grown and grown since then. So it doesn't mean that you have to take a dip, but it does mean that you have to do things differently. Mm -hmm. So deciding how you're going to do that. And 
I'm passionate about helping people create an online course, an online program or something scalable Mm -hmm. because there's a few reasons why I'm so passionate about it. And the first is that courses have given me time freedom and a lot of financial freedom as well. So I'm very passionate because of what they've done for my life and the transformations that I've been able to facilitate globally rather than just in my own backyard. Yeah. And the second is that when you set out to create an online course or on any towards any big goal that you haven't done before, it requires a different level. It requires you to grow. And so what happens and what I see in my program, the SEAL method is my signature program that helps you create this online program. You get all the strategies and the how-tos, but if you don't also expand yourself to be able to put your stake in the ground and say, I am an expert at this. I have the confidence to go global with this. If you don't work through all of that, it's not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so it is such an expansive thing to do. And the personal development that occurs along that journey is what actually lights me up. Yeah. And so that's why the program has been built that yes, you have the course where it's all the strategy, but then you have the coaching and the mentorship because this is going to require more than just doing what I say to do. Yeah. 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 And so what do you think when you've seen, whether they've been clients or people in your programs, when people, you've just pointed out what the the ingredients are, but what do you think women are doing wrong then that's making it harder than it needs to be? I think that they are operating out of fear. Hmm. And so when we're making decisions from a place of fear, it's not aligned and it's it's almost like putting a Band-Aid on something. Mm. Okay, my income's dip. Let me just quickly put something together and do this launch, even though I don't even love what I'm launching and I don't have time and, or let me, whatever it might be, take on a, mm. an un- misaligned client because I just need the validation or I need the money. And so when we're operating from a place of fear instead of abundance, yeah. then the decisions that we make aren't in alignment with what we actually want and yeah. who we really are. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you leaned into growing and scaling your own business and going from solopreneur to being an agency, how did you make that transition and the hiring and what do you love now about that agency model? Yeah. It's interesting because everything in my business has been this very beautiful evolution that none of it was planned in Uh advance. It all just unfolded because it was always aligned. And so I started out in photography and launched a photography course. That's the first thing that I did in the online space was launch this photography course. People saw the growth of my business and wanted business coaching. They often were asking me questions about courses and how I built my business so that I was teaching on courses. But then the gap was that they didn't have the time capacity or desire to actually do the hard labor, the tech, the slides, all of that stuff. And so people were asking if always, oh, what well, do you have a, a recommend a VA or who can help me with this? Or the mm. tech is that organically, I was like, you know what? I can pull together some people who can help with this. And all of a sudden we have this agency where yeah. we help people with all of that heavy lifting. And my girlfriend said it perfectly. She said, because I received a few big clients beyond anything that I had ever anticipated or done before. And I said, should I take this all on? And she said, yes, it's called building the rocket ship on the way up. (laughs) And I love that because it's the saying, build build your parachute on the way down. That's what I used to say, but I'm like, I love that. Like we're soaring, we are on the up. Yeah. And trusting yourself to figure it out. Yeah. And so that's all it was. And I have a very lean team. I have three or four people, depending on the month, all contractor. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't any huge headache. It gets to be as simple and as easy as we want. Yeah. And the reason that I have really fallen in love with the agency model is because it's also a form of passive income Mm -hmm. because I'm not doing the work. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a key way for, I see for so many of my clients, it's just, it's that 
it's that leap, right? It's that like the courage and the bravery to go, okay, but there are ways to do it that are not at all, all that risky and you are not have a salaried employee or anything like that and makes it, yes. it feels more daunting than it actually might be. Absolutely. And when we don't know how to do something, we make it out to be very scary and hard in our minds. Yeah. And then as soon as we actually start, like I always say, or I always tell the story about how the first time I launched a course, it took me three years to create. The second mm -hmm. course took me two weeks. Yeah. And this is the same thing with my clients after my program, six months. And when they launch their course, their next course is out in a month, you know? So it's that doing it the first time will feel a little bit more uncomfortable, just like anything. But once you do it, you've passed the test, you've gotten to the next level and it's not going to be hard like that every time. Yeah. And so the courses that you help people build out, do you just recommend self-paced courses or does it depend on the program, the person? Yeah. I'm very much about creating the most transformational program and mm. And also being in alignment with how you want to show up and how you want to live. And so I had a call with someone yesterday and she's, I just need this to be hundred percent passive. And I was like, that's fine. We position it and our promise is going to be slightly different than if she was like, I want to have a course and I also want to mentor these people. Yeah. So it's, you can create it any which way you want, but depending on the promise that you yeah. are promising, the transformation sure. you're promising you have to show up and make sure that you're creating something that is actually delivering. Yeah. And it might take time for you to figure that out. I had a self-paced and on the market right now, it's everyone's course creation programs are all self-study, which mm -hmm. makes sense because it's like, like here, this is how you create a passive course. It's passive. Yeah. But what I found was that people it's not knowledge that people can't find. Mm. People could go figure out how to create a course, but it's the actual work that needs to happen internally, the mentorship, the accountability, that's what actually moves the needle. And so I shifted my program from a self-study to a six-month mentorship and the results have been incredible. And, and I wanted to do that. And so that works for everyone. Yeah. And tell me about some of those big results that don't make sense to people when, mm -hmm. when, you, when people first look at them and they're like, that, I just, that's not possible for me. Yeah. So I always say results that don't make sense because the results that I've had in my business don't make sense. For example, I have my accountant who will say, oh, wow, you've, it's old man. And he's not my accountant <laughs> anymore. He was my husband's business accountant that has been with them for 20 years. So old school yeah. white man. And he would be doing my talks and he'd say, oh, wow, you're doing really well. This has got to even out or you can't keep growing this fast. And I would say, I'm just getting started. And he would just laugh because I'm like, yeah, on paper, there's no 3% growth year over year, 10% growth. I don't have those lame yeah. growth metrics. It's what do I desire? What do I want to go for? Yeah. And so when you do that, you do create results that don't make sense on paper and don't make sense to a lot of people. And I think the way that I've been able to do it is through that dance of continually reworking and building based on the strategy that supports my business mm. and growing on a human, on a soul level. Like that is at least 50%, I would say closer to 80% of the work that I do is on my own energetics and capacity. And it's also the most fun. So <laughs> yeah, me. I agree. And I think that it takes bravery, but the more you invest in yourself in that work, the more you desire it and the more you can see how it really does unlock that kind of next level or more bigger dreams, or maybe that big dream is something that you want to do with your family, or it doesn't have to necessarily be an ego centered financial. Mm -hmm. It could be, I want to do more. I want to travel more. I want to climb this mountain. I want to do things in my life. Exactly. And so some of the results that don't make sense for myself, it's been that I've been able to double my revenue year over year for the past three years without working more, working mm -hmm. less each year and continuing to double. And I have in, I launched my business when I was on maternity leave with my son. And so my son's turning five this July, my business launched four years ago mm -hmm. in July. Yeah. And so it it's new. I've been raising two babies and I'm nearing in on half a million. Those are results that don't make sense. And yeah. my clients have the same res results that don't make sense going from consistent 30K months to 80K months, retiring their partners, having 50K launches mm. without 
launching. Like I have someone who had a 50 K launch without actually sharing on social media. And so it, these on paper don't make sense, but when you are aligned to it and when you're operating from a place of alignment and your soul's purpose, Mm -hmm. magic happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. And so you do talk a lot about alignment and taking aligned action. And so if you looked at this week, for example, can you give us some examples, some actual examples of how you're taking aligned action and how this helps you get to your goals? Oh yeah. You're asking me this question at a very interesting time for me, because there are some huge shifts going on for me personally, Mm -hmm. which are impacting my business. And It hasn't fully landed for me, but at the beginning of May, so it's June 1st as we record this, at the beginning of May, I started to feel a lot of, no, I started to feel no desire to be posting what I typically post on social media. And I actually went very quiet on social media for three weeks. And the reason was because I was like, I didn't want to consume anything. I was so sick of what I was seeing and what I had been putting out and it wasn't aligned to me. And so I didn't force myself to show up. Now I will caveat this by saying I have the luxury to do that because I have recurring revenue that doesn't require me to sell month to month. Like I haven't sold anything in months, but my revenue doesn't drop because I have, I have high monthly recurring revenue. And so the aligned action for me was trusting what I was feeling, not understanding it, but saying, you know what, I'm not about to go put up some content that doesn't feel good to me just because I feel like I should. And so I let myself take that time off. And over the past week yesterday, things started landing. I gave myself so much space to the point where my team was like, Hey, Sarah, are you okay? Because I was just allowing, and there was resistance a hundred percent. My human was resisting the shifts and suddenly things just started to become so clear through the support of the coaches that I have, things were becoming clear and it's still unfolding, but the content that I've started putting out and that has felt poured out of me and felt aligned is, has shifted. Yeah. And I've not questioned it. I have no idea what it's leading to. And I've stopped questioning it. Yeah. I don't question it. It doesn't need to be this strategic post. What's the point? What am I selling? No, I'm just speaking from my soul and I'm trusting that the path is going to become clearer and clearer the more that I do that. And so that has been what's been happening for me over the past few weeks. And as I've done that, the light bulbs, the clarity has just been mind blowing. Mm -hmm. My husband literally took a picture of me like Mm -hmm. this the other day because it was all dropping in. And so if we don't give ourselves the space, yeah, we can't then have those breakthroughs. So true. And it feels uncomfortable, isn't it? Like you said, it, you, like at first you're like, what on earth is happening? Because we can't, scary. you don't know the steps. Yeah. Scary. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what it means. You want to hold on to the way it, you know, it works and it was, but that's actually not true to you. If it's not true to you anymore, yeah. then that's not going to work anyways. Yeah. And so that's been very interesting. And I know that you've burned things to the ground and started fresh multiple times. And so you totally understand that. I'm not saying that I'm burning things to the ground, but just oh, but- recognizing that I'm not sure what's coming. And leaning in, leaning into that kind of discomfort, but also maybe a leap or a risk taking. And that's how we create compelling and resonant content and resonant programs. It's resonance is about like harmony, right? Like a frequency that that matches what is desired by that client, that person or those people that are going to be attracted into your world. And so if you're just pushing out like willy nilly content, oh, it's I I haven't posted in a week, then you just create a quote or share something or whatever that doesn't come from your soul, then A, it's not aligned with who you are, but it's also not aligned with where you're going. No, not at all. I cannot. And I think that one of the things I love most about myself is if I don't want to do something, I cannot do it. And so and there have been times in my life where this has not supported me that well. And yeah. I think that ultimately it does, but in terms of the way that society expects you to operate mm. and that's why corporate life wasn't for me because I no, yeah. like not today, <laughs> not today. And I just can't force myself, which I think, I think is really just a reflection of my authenticity, which feels a little bit uncomfortable to say, but I was having that conversation with my husband is like, that's why people resonate. And mm. people have reflected this to me before, because I, I do not know how 
not to be me and do what I need to do. Yeah. So good. So good. I know something that you share that I have to ask you a question about is that, and a part of your former life was travel and a big part of it was, and has been for me, I would love to, to tell me about your climb of Kilimanjaro and what it taught you that you still apply today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I shared this story about how I had dreamt of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro for a year. It wasn't like a lifelong dream, but I used to work. I traveled a lot after university for a couple of years. And when I met my husband, it was because people, somebody set us, a mutual friend set us up because he also had been traveling anyways. I won't go into that, but Mm -hmm. travel has just been, was a huge part of our lives. And we got married in 2015. And I always said to him, I'm not having kids until I climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And, but it was a huge expense to go to Africa and climb Kili. Mm. And so we wanted to get married and buy a house and start having kids. And so the clock was ticking a little bit in terms of that dream. And one day out of the blue, a old company that I used to work for called me up and said, Hey, our models for a trip just dropped out. I used to work. If I didn't mention it, I used to work for this company. So they called a mod, a couple models just dropped out of a trip. Can you, do you think you and JP could fill in? And I was said, we're getting married in two months and I have, we have our honeymoon booked. We've already been to Costa Rica this year. We're going to Jamaica later in the year. We, I don't have any vacation left, but like, where is the trip? And he's like, it's a month from now. We actually left June 1st, 2015. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. Eight years ago today, so cool. So cool. we left. That's wild. Of course you asked me about that. Of so course. aligned. And he said, so spoiler alert, we went, okay. So yeah. he said, it's climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and my jaw just dropped. And I'm like, oh my God, I, ha- uh, okay. I have to make this work. Let me get back to you. So I went into my boss's office and I said, okay, like G Adventures just called me. And they just told me that we get a free trip to Africa to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Like this would be like $15,000 for the two of us to do this. And I'm like, but I have no vacation. And my boss was amazing. And he said, don't worry, we'll figure it out. So good. And then call my husband and I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to get the tea works for a family company. And he was like, oh, I don't know. Same thing. We're away a lot. Yeah. We left June 1st. We got married July 25th. And this this happened. We had a month. We had a month to prepare. After we said yes, we had a month to prepare for this so eight good. day, eight yeah. day trek. Anyways, what that, even that, what that taught me was that when you believe that something is going to happen and when you just focus on being a vibrational match for mm. the things that you desire, yeah. you don't know how it's going to happen and you don't need to know yeah. the path will unfold and you can manifest whatever you want. And that was one of the biggest manifestations of my life. And then the actual trek was so life-giving, so life-changing. One of the most spiritual experiences I had, not intentionally, but mm-hmm. when you are on the side of one of the largest mountains in the world and you are above the clouds, mm-hmm. you have a different perspective on life. And I am I, I'm almost tearing up just thinking about this one moment that I have. And often when I'm meditating, I come back to this moment where I'm sitting on a rock and everyone's in their tents. It's in the middle of the afternoon and we had a shorter trek that day and we're above the clouds and I sat on a rock and I just looked out and I just had tears flooding down my face for just this wow I'm such a small tiny speck in this big world and there's why are we worrying about the small things like this is what life is about and it was the most incredible experience That's amazing. You have to go and listen to, you just made me think of, I did an episode with Jill Wheatley and she's, it's always in this week and she's a friend from, we went to Laurier together. Go and listen to her, my podcast with her, this dropped on Monday. Uh, She's been climbing the highest mountains in the world and she lost her, almost lost her entire sight. So she has 30% vision. Gosh. She's climbed seven or eight of the top of the highest. Wow. More than 8,000 meters peaks. But she's wow. Canadian, so I think you'll like that. And given that I you would did, love to listen to that, yeah, go, go it listen is. To that. I'll send it to you later. But it's so inspiring, and there's so much reflection about in her blog. And her whole mission is called Mountains of My Mind, mm-hmm. and there's so much that happens 
when with the mountain analogy and has been mm-hmm. the mountain for me has always been instrumental. My very first life coach, when I went to her and I was as a corporate executive in a very male dominated office and kind of industry, just like Mad Men, the ad agency. And she was like, Suzanne, there, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just a, kind of feeling like you're at the bottom of your mountain and we need to get you back to the top of your mountain. And mm-hmm. I've always always worked to Mm -hmm. that vision ever since. I love that. Yeah. And so my last question is, is uh, continues on this topic of travel because one of my values is travel and adventure and integrating this into my life every year is super important to help me feel fulfilled and happy. And it's one of the things at the beginning of the year, or even when we finish one holiday, we're like, where are we going next? (sighs) home exchanges, we're always looking at all sorts of different things. And so I love to ask my guests, what adventure means to you? Oh, adventure is absolutely one of my core values. And I think that for a long time, I had this misconception in my brain that adventure had to mean flying off to a foreign Mm. city and immersing yourself in that culture. I always wanted to go to the craziest place. Like my husband and I went to India for a month, a year after we met, and we've been to all sorts of crazy countries Mm. because I love that culture shock. Like that feels like adventure for me. Him and I have like never been to like an all-inclusive or anything. No, nothing against that. I feel like there's a time and a place, but in terms of adventure for me now, what I've had to resolve in my mind is that adventure doesn't have to be a month in India. It gets to be in smaller moments in our life. I've, I have had to learn that because with two young kids who are in school and all of that, I find adventure, you can find adventure in every day. Mm. And I think that it's going to be different for everyone. And for me, it is doing something new that expands me. So if something, I get to do something that is really expansive to me, that feels like an adventure. I love that. I love that. Yeah. When we, whenever we pack up to go, even if it's in a car to somewhere here in Europe, the visceral kind of feeling that kind of permeates around the house is palpable. I can feel it and the kids adore it. And my son, my eldest, who's 15, is at that like tippy end of the high school. And he's been traveling on a plane from Australia back and forth to Canada since he was three months old. And incidentally, it's had such a big impression. He wants to be a pilot. Like these wow. kind of things become foundational. My, my youngest doesn't want to go on a plane. Actually, he says he wants to be a farmer and a pilot, but I think he's just copying his older brother. <laughs> but these are things that become, might be values of ours that can obviously yeah. carry on. But yeah, for me, it's like a, it's a real, like you can feel it. And you're so right. Uh, With kids, people think that all of a sudden things are going to be like, ah, no more adventure. We did a month in India as well, actually on our honeymoon or our honeymoon. God. Yeah. Wow. We'll have to talk about that in another yeah. episode. But we could do just an adventure one. I'm sure we could talk for ages yeah. about travel and adventure. But yeah, so we, you have to redefine it for yourself. But even mm-hmm. one of my guests that I interviewed, Amber Lillystrom, was like, I don't love international travel. It's about what's here, going out on her lake and, and things like that. So I just love asking that mm-hmm. question because it just, it, I think it's just very, not just telling, but it's I just nice to question. hear different perspectives. So good. Yeah, it is a feeling. And the sooner that you get to tap into what that is for you, the more adventure you can create in your life, especially if that's a value of yours. Like trying a new food can feel like an adventure. Okay. Okay. Sarah, I really appreciated you taking the time today in your not busy schedule. And (laughs) (laughs) I hope that people can connect with you. Can you tell them where they can find you and what's going on in your world in terms of, obviously you talked about potentially new stuff or other things that are in the future, but tell them what they can do with you right now. Amazing. So I'm at the Sarah Lambert on Instagram and I'm on there a lot other than the beginning of May. So that's where I love to hang out. But I also have a podcast where Suzanne has been interviewed as well, the expansive entrepreneur. And I really love being able to share my own journey and story and evolution, as well as having conversations with amazing entrepreneurs. So those are two great places to check out if you would like to connect more. Awesome. So good. Thank you very much. And we'll see everybody here the next time. Thank Thank you. you for joining me for this week's episode of Zero Wasted Days. I truly hope that you found it to be valuable and inspirational as you create and you grow your own business and work towards living more life first. 
I would love you to subscribe, to like this video, and of course, if you have any comments, drop them in here below. Also, if you tag me on socials, I would love to get to know you. I love connecting with my audience, so be sure to tag me at Suzanne Acteson or at Zero Wasted Days underscore, and I will see you inside the DMs as well as here for the next episode next week.